tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn about Hawaii's burrowing seabirds like wedge-tailed shearwaters that sound kind of like, well, like babies. I'll show you how to draw a shearwater and even how to sound like one. Then I'll show you some painting techniques I used to paint endangered seabirds for the new Conservation Council for Hawaii poster. All this and more on a sheerly amazing episode of Hawaii is home to several kinds of seabirds in the petrel family that feed in the ocean and nest in burrows, some of them way high in the mountains. As soon as they are able to fly, they live over the open ocean for the first several years of their lives. When they're old enough to breathe, they return to land where they dig their burrows, mate, and lay just a single egg. When the chick hatches, both male and female parents feed out at sea and return to regurgitate their food to their chick. Their meals consist of fish, squid, and sometimes small crabs and shrimp. When seabirds are young, they're covered with fluffy down feathers. As they get older, their down feathers are replaced with adult feathers. When they're ready to fledge or fly away, a lot of them still have tufts of the fluffy down feathers left. Though they can dig deep burrows, they're still preyed upon by feral cats and rats, which are a great threat to the survival of these birds. In some areas, researchers set up cameras, but it's very difficult to stop the predation. Feral cats are capable of killing many of the native seabirds in a single evening. Petrels and shearwaters do not drink fresh water. They get their water from the sea and have desalinization glands that separate the salt from the water. The excess salt is then released out of the nostrils on their beaks. Many of these birds are endangered species, like the uwa'u, which is also known as the Hawaiian petrel. The uwa'u is a large petrel with a wingspan of about 3 feet and is known to nest at over 8,000 feet up the slopes of Hawaii's tallest volcanoes. Another rare petrel is the Banrum storm petrel, known as ake ake. It's a small bird with a big forehead and a white patch on its, uh, well, its rump. Shearwaters are also in the petrel family. They get their name because of the way they fly, often shearing the water with their wingtips. The endangered Newell shearwater is a strikingly colored bird with black and white feathers and bright pink feet. The Newell shearwater's Hawaiian name is A'o. These birds are rare and endangered and they often fall from the sky due to bright lights that disorient them. The birds are in great danger when they fall to the ground. Some of them land on roads and get hit by cars, while others can get attacked by cats or dogs. Each year during the fledging season, stations are placed throughout the state for people to drop off shearwaters that have landed and have had a hard time taking off. The birds are then let to rest and released in places where bright lights are minimal. On Kauai, a blessing ceremony accompanies the release of the a'o into the wild. Here, Kumu Saber Kalka helps a young a'o take flight. If you find a seabird in need of help, you can contact one of the following organizations.
Don't worry if you've missed these numbers, you can go to my Patrick Ching YouTube channel to watch this episode again for the contacts. In my life, I've been lucky to live around one of my favorite seabirds, the wedge-tailed shearwater. These birds are known for their moaning calls which they make while flying or in their burrows. The calls have been likened to the whining of cats or babies crying. It is especially freaky if you come to a place you're not aware of these birds and you hear the cries they make. Shipwrecked sailors who landed on deserted islands would get terrified hearing the cries of the shearwaters but could not see the birds that were nesting underground. One of my favorite things to do at shearwater season is to imitate the birds. <laughs> I like to get my friends to go along with it too. When we return, I'll show you how to draw sheer water and its fluffy chick. Alright friends, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing a sheer water with a chick. And you know the chicks when they're young, they're so fuzzy. It's just going to be a little fuzz ball. I'm going to put the chick right there and the parent shearwater over there. And I'm going to start off with the chick. And like I do every time, I'm going to form it up pressing softly. How are we going to press? Softly. softly. That's right. We're going to press softly so we don't dig into the paper. And that way, if you want to ignore some lines or erase some lines, you can do it. Okay? So you can use a pencil. I'll use a pen so you can see a little bit. I'll go and form it up and then I'll come back with a bigger pen so you can really see what's going on. So for the chick, I'm going to put the chick right around there with a circle and I'll give the chick a little bit of a round head like that too and I think I'll make him flapping his little wings, you know, so I'm going to do a little series of kind of like little ovals, yeah, that's a wing. <laughs> and uh, here, I'll give a little bit of another one showing on the other side a beak right around there. Okay, I think I'll have the beak a little bit open. And the maca goes right around there. Also give him a little bit of a lump right there on the booty part, you know? Um, we can show some of its feet, toes. A little bit of like three pointed toes sticking out from underneath. And the reason I did the baby first is that I'm going to do the adult and the adult's going to be a little bit behind. So that's why I sketched the baby first. Alright, and now that I've got the baby done, I'll do the adult and I'll put the head of the adult right around here, a kind of a circle, and then kind of a big oval, okay? Kind of like a pointed egg, you know, for the body. Now I'm also going to use another pointed oval a little bit on top and that's going to be for the wing over there, okay? Connect the head to the body, and the beak, a little bit of a hook on that beak, and I'll open the mouth a little bit too, kind of like they're talking or singing or like moaning to each other. <laughs> Give the parent a maka too, the eye, and I'll show some of the parent's toes coming out from underneath, okay? All right. Now for the tail, I'm just going to kind of show the tail there, kind of in a well, kind of a pointed shape. And that's all the forming up I'm going to do for my shearwaters. Okay, so now that I got my shearwaters formed up, I'm going to make that baby look really fluffy. But first, I'm going to put a little bit of the beak showing. A little bit of a point there. Yeah. Now we'll make the baby kind of fluffy. Around the booty part. A little bit of the wing. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, so that baby's good and fluffy. Now I'll put the parent back here. Meow. A little bit of an open mouth, like they're kind of calling to each other. The parent's going to be a lot smoother than the young one. Now for the wing, I'll use that shape there. can leave a little bit of a white spot in the maca. Okay. And now we can do a little bit of shading. And what we can do is put some shading right under the birds. I'm actually going to do some shading on the birds. Fuzzy shading over here. I think I'll finish off by putting them actually in a burrow, okay? So yeah, we'll, we'll put them in a burrow. And that means I'm going to make that in back of the burrow even darker. Put some ferns and things, some grasses, some rocks, yeah. Now you can choose what kind of shear water you want to make. You know, if it's a wedge tail shear water, then it's kind of a, a faded gray between the top and the bottom of the body. But if it's a Newell's, they got a sharper line between the black and the white. And yeah, you can just go ahead and you know, make a definitive line and you can make the top part dark and the bottom part lighter. But both the shear water species have pretty much the same looking fuzzy chicks. You can put a little dots on the dirt, remind yourself that that's the earth. Don't forget your signature. <laughs> when we return, I'll show you how I painted some endangered seabirds for the Conservation Council for Hawaii's educational poster.
Conservation Council for Hawaii, or CCH, is an environmental nonprofit organization dedicated to nature and wildlife conservation. One of its important projects is to make educational posters which they give out to the schools. I'm really thankful I had the chance to paint some of these posters. It was a youthful dream that came true. I was about 16 years old when I found my direction in life to be a wildlife artist and teach people about nature through my art. I was really excited when Conservation Council for Hawaii asked me to do my first um, wildlife poster. It's exactly what I want to do with my art. I want to make art that um, is nice so people put it up in their house, but also educational that makes people want to find out more about what's in the painting. So over the years, um, you know, I've been at it for quite a while and I've done a few of the posters for Conservation Council for Hawaii, including the Shearwaters, Opai Ula, the red Opai alkaline environment. I did uh, Mauna Kea. The Hawaiian Atoll was one that was really special to me, having spent a lot of my life on the atolls with seals and turtles and birds and stuff. And uh, Kauai Nui Marsh with all the water birds. These are some of the posters that I did for Conservation Council for Hawaii. The poster contents are decided by Conservation Council and their members. Um, they kind of tell me what they'd like to include in the poster and I go about brainstorming some sketches. So that's called a conceptual sketch. Don't be afraid to do them, make them look like a cartoon, it's okay. It's telling the client uh, what's going to be included in the picture and it's a good time to go back and forth with discussion and see uh, what might need to be adjusted, what might need to be more in focus, made bigger, smaller, and so forth. Once we get a conceptual drawing agreed upon, then I'll go and make a scale drawing. We'll actually make it the actual size of the finished painting. So the next thing I do is uh, my first layer. And my first layer is like a preview of your finished painting. You know, you put down the colors, everything down the way you think it's gonna be. And it's also a good time to show yourself if your plan's working or if you need to make color adjustments or any adjustments that might make the painting better. Okay, next comes more layers and you're going over what you did. Your painting's coming out more rich and robust and you're putting in the bulk of what you wanna include. And then you go for the details of your painting and this is where you start to lead the viewer through your painting you're actually in charge as the artist of where the viewer's eyes go first, next, where they flow, where they play, where they escape. So those are the things that I'm thinking and feeling while I'm going about this painting. And here it is uh, for you and I hope you enjoy it. So in this painting, I got the Ua'u, the Hawaiian petrol. A'o is the Newell Shearwater, and the Ake Ake is the uh, Banrum Storm Petrel, all Hawaiian uh, endangered seabirds that nest in the hills. You can see in the background, I got a setting. It's actually from Lanai, up in the uh, mountains of Lanai. And I had a challenge in that I have black and white birds that need to be in focus as a center of attention yet I need to set them off with some color and this was a beautiful um, valley with a lot of uh, you know dirt showing the earth the orange rust colors but I had to tone everything down so that the birds themselves are the featured attraction making their contrast the most intense and making their sharpness the most intense I went about painting the final painting by doing the background first and working my way closer. So I did the farthest things away first. The sky, the distant Maui, the ocean, clouds, uh, coming up to the island Lanai and the um, canyon. And everything has to be kind of subdued with sky color, making it seem a little farther away so that when you get into the foreground and some of the elements like the yellow mamolehua, the halapepe plant, um, lots of uluhe ferns, and of course the red or pink lehua blossoms. And foraging on top one of these ohia lehua plants is 
one of our native land snails, the pupu kaneoi, the singing tree snails. So when I do a painting and spend this much time with it, there's a lot of things I think about. Um, I think about the Conservation Council for Hawaii and the work that they do, and I want to do something that really pleases them. I want to do my best work because I love these plants and animals and I want to do them justice. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Hawaii's endangered seabirds. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send your art to aloha at patrickching.com. Bye-bye.